welcome back to GP Trucking Channel. I'm Jim Gibson, and today we're going to be doing a little experiment on what it actually takes to stop a truck. I appreciate you volunteering for this you experiment. You already know. Let's go. Yes, sir. All right. Here's the deal, sir. Number one, can you use your imagination? Yes, sir. Number two, can you be completely honest? All the time. In your imagination, you're driving this truck. All right. That's the interstate down through there. Okay. All right. We're here in Columbia. Traffic's moderately heavy like usual. Right. All right. And what I need you to do is take this stuff. Walk out there. And on any given day, the following distance that you normally keep between you and the vehicle in front of you at highway speeds. Okay. If you would, set the cone down and then come back. Sure thing. All right. The average SUV with four wheel disc brakes can stop at about 150 feet from the time the brake applies to the time it comes to a complete stop. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take this cone, I'm going to start at his cone and go out 150 feet. The concept is we're following that car, it nails the brakes, we're going to see where the car is going to stop, then we're going to see where we're going to stop. Okay? My first number is what? 142. 142. All right. We're running, by this test, we're doing 55 miles an hour because that's what it said inside, right? If you would, please. Take me to 142. Everybody walk with us. Look back there. You're going to travel at 55 miles an hour. You're going to travel this distance just trying to figure out what you're going to do. This is the perception time. Okay? All right. Now, we're going to go into reaction time, right? My second number is what? 61. All right. Reset your wheel. All right. Reaction time, 1.1 seconds. 60. 61 feet. Let's go to 61. That's how fast the distance you traveled from the time you realized that there was an issue and you needed to do something. You've traveled this far in a little over three seconds. Now, we want to travel how many feet in brake length? 32. 32 divided by 55. 0.58. Alright, so we want to be right at a grand total of about 4 seconds. All over with certain nut. Reset your wheel for me, please. You got to do it now. What are you going to do? Switch the lane. Uh, shoulder. I'm going on the shoulder. You're going to turn the wheel. And that's what happens. The average driver will realize that he has got to avoid the accident at all costs. He will turn the wheel. Lane of least resistance, the shoulder and the grass. Okay? As soon as he turns that wheel, he has avoided this accident, but now there's another one waiting for him. Right. The number one cause of death in the state of South Carolina is collision with a tree. Right. And this is why I think 498 drivers died in single vehicle accidents. Because they found themselves in this position, they decided they had to turn the wheel, and when they turned the wheel, they cost them their life. I can't back that up. There's no statistic to say it. 
It's just my concept, the only concept, the only rational explanation I can come up with for that many drivers to die in single vehicle accidents. If you would finish taking me to 61. Please. come into contact with the drum and the vehicle is going to begin to stop. We're already almost four and a half seconds into it. Okay? We traveled 142 feet, right? So let's call that 140 and another 60 is 200 and then another 30. So we're somewhere around 235 feet that we've traveled just trying to get this thing to start to stop. And now we've got another 215 feet before it actually comes to a stop. So if you would please reset your wheel and take me to 215. Ideal conditions, the best it possibly gets, this is what it takes to stop the truck. Right. 450 feet. Right. And that's just applying your brakes at how many percent? Red lights and blue smoke stopping, but right. full pressure, everything you can to bring it to a complete stop. And that's fully loaded. Remember, light, empty, or bobtail, it's going to take part of it. They right. Truck is designed to carry weight. That's where it's is most efficient in the braking aspect. Yeah. Alrighty? If you're bobtailing, there's no weight on that fifth wheel at all. That means that back end just wants to get up and ride. And a, and a light trailer does the same thing. Your best braking effort is with a fully loaded truck. Alrighty? But, by the same token, that's where you have your most momentum. Because you got all that weight rolling, right? Absolutely. Okay? And you gotta slow it, you gotta slow it all down. The average driver will take a cell phone out and he'll look at it two seconds and then he'll look out the road. He'll look back down at it for another two seconds and look back out the road. Well, at 60 miles an hour, that's 90 feet per second. For each two seconds he looked at that cell phone, that truck has gone an additional 180 feet. Right? Look over there. Is that gray building over there? That's about 180 feet. Anybody got any questions on this? I want you to look at this and burn this in your mind. Right? I want you to remember what it takes to stop. The next time you see a driver running six, eight foot off of somebody's rear end, 20, 25 feet off of somebody's rear end at 60 miles an hour. I hope it makes you understand just how serious that is and just what the possibility of death is in that position. Right? Burn this in your brain. Remember, because this is part of the reason why your job is so dangerous. Any questions? The cone that you set down, uh -huh. measure the distance from your cone to the front of that truck up there, okay? Okay. Let's go back up. truck driver only maintains between a half and three quarters of a second of following distance on any given time. That's about it. Right. Sir, how many feet did you have? 70 feet. 70 feet. All right. I'm going to use 60 miles an hour, 90 feet per second, a little over three quarters of a second of following distance. Right. When we first looked at it, I'm sure that there were some of you thought that that was a little bit of an excessive distance, right? 
Some of you thought it was too far, so I'm not far enough. But it's only three quarters of a second. Okay. I hope this was helpful. I hope you remember what we saw out here today. All right. Next video, we're going to be working on collision mitigation systems, how they work, what they're capable of doing, how they can help you. And until then, see you in the next video.